Ever wonder why you're bad with the sheriff? This is Holy here and this is going to be my sheriff guide and how you can instantly improve with the sheriff by following this guide. Eagle and pistol rounds are crucial for your team and this is one of the best guns to kill enemies with to win rounds. This video will be broken down into parts where it will include fundamentals, movement, and an aim routine to practice the sheriff. On the other hand, if you enjoy these type of videos, please make sure to subscribe, like, and turn on bell notifications. Let's move on to the fundamentals. One of the topics I like to start off with is your sensitivity. Having the wrong sensitivity will cause you to over flick and getting your timings wrong. This is one of the major issues a lot of players have since they like to switch their sensitivity almost every death or game. I'm changing my sense. Getting used and sticking to one sensitivity will build a more consistent shot and I promise you will tap more heads if you just stick to one and practice. Take it to mind it is basically the same concept as practicing the sheriff and perfecting it. Find the right sensitivity where it is a sweet spot for you where it is not too fast and not too slow either. Having higher sensitivity has its pros but there are many cons to that as well. What I suggest is to have lower sensitivity for more consistency in the long run. So after you find the perfect sensitivity for you, timing and recoil are the most important important factors into mastering your sheriff. Head into the range where you can practice and shoot your sheriff slowly so they can get used to the recoil and know when it's accurate. The timing of how fast or how slow you shoot your sheriff to make it accurate all depends on you. From there you can attempt and increase the timing of your shot and experimenting the recoil of your sheriff is really beneficial so that you'll know when it's okay to shoot in a game or even a competitive match. After you get used to this fundamental, I guarantee your sheriff will be 100 times better. On the other hand, once you adjust to the timing, you can move on to recoil. Typically for me, spamming your sheriff is only beneficial if your enemy is close up and in front of you because sometimes they like to run and gun which messes up your crosshair placement and timing. There are times spamming is needed up close, but knowing when to not spam and when to spam is chef's kiss. If you take medium range and long range fights, you always want to tap because spraying in this era is not beneficial. All of these factors could also be practiced in the range. After getting used to your timing and recoil, adding in counter strafing to your movement is really important. If you guys all know what counter strafing is, you could check out Royal G's guide which he goes in depth about it and explains the importance of it. After learning the foundation of counter strafing, head into the range. From here, start by shooting two points on the wall slowly and making sure you're aligned with the shot. Once you feel like you got the hang of it, you can increase the timing of the shot to perfect it. Counter strafing is very important so once you learn this movement, you could survive many gunfights that are crucial as well as most eco rounds. You want to take your time instead of being fast with the shot. After practicing this for a while, it would all seem effortless. Now, crosshair placement is the most important factor when it comes to the sheriff. Predicting how your enemy will swing off an angle or at a common spot will be helpful in the long run. Typically at common angles, enemies will tend to jiggle or jump peek compared to uncommon angles where they will swing wider. You always want to have your crosshair at head level so you break into the habit of setting up yourself for success. If you want to learn more about crosshair placement, you can check out Saro's crosshair placement guide which he teaches you in depth about it. Once you master crosshair placement, I guarantee you you will hit more sheriff shots than you have ever had before. Crosshair placement does all the work for you when it comes to the sheriff. Moving on to taking fights. Knowing when to take the right gunfight with the sheriff is also another important factor into your gameplay. Depending on the agent you play, for example duelist, at the start of rounds you are able to play a more aggressive angle in which you do kill the enemy, you have abilities to get you out of situations compared to other roles. With other roles, you are required to take more passive angles because you have no other escape ability. Take this into a bigger picture. Taking long range fights with the sheriff is okay on pistol rounds, but on an eco round against rifles isn't ideal. You want to minimize the gap between your enemy where you'll feel confident to win the fight as well as aiming for the 150 head tap. Be aware of your enemy's health so that you know what kind of fights to take. Also take into account which angles you take fights from so you can quickly escape if you miss your shots. Now, I want to quickly address the common mistakes people make when using the sheriff. Timing is key always with the sheriff. Being accurate and taking your time is most important than being flippy and being fast with your shot. This is where all the factors in the video are explained come into play and you will notice it. Spamming your sheriff shots will only help you on the luck aspect compared to skill. Another common mistake is when people crouch too much while using the gun. Crouching does help at times when the enemy is also crouching up close, but typically you don't want to crouch when taking long range gunfights. The reason behind this is because it will ruin your crosshair placement making your shot go to a random area or below their head. Always warm up before going into games. Now, what I do is use either aim labs or Kovacs, that's up to you. You want to typically focus on tracking and shifting targets. After you complete your normal aim trainer routine, simply head into the range. From here, practice your timing by shooting the bots from head to head and after, increase the timing with counter shaping and target 
target to target. After the range, simply head into a few DMs and simply get used to the enemy movement and getting the feel of how people move. Now, you are finished and ready for your next competitive okay, match. After watching this guide, hopefully your sheriff shots will look like this and I'll be providing some of my best sheriff clips for you to watch. Stay down! Duck! Three! Uh. One enemy remaining. Oh my god, he can't Oh my god, wait, wait. Oh my god, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to think this guy. I may have. Wait, I'm baiting one. Let's go! Wait, wait, let me get this. Let me get this. Oh, he's not that hard. He's not that hard. One off. One enemy remaining. Oh my God! Last player standing. Down B. Your fault. Thirty seconds left. What? Oh! One enemy remaining. Oh my God! Spike down A. You're fucking this guy. I just wanted to go over a quick recap of my sheriff guide in case anyone missed anything. We first go over the fundamentals of finding the right sensitivity that works for you and sticking to it. After that, we talk about timing and recoil of your sheriff so you know when is the right time to shoot your sheriff for full accuracy. Getting down these tips includes adding counter strafing or movement you would say to your gameplay. Crosshair placement comes next and predicting how your enemy swings and having your crosshair placement head level at all times will help in the long run. Next, we go over how we take fights in different scenarios and knowing when to back off when challenging an enemy. We also go over common mistakes people make and how to fix them so that it will benefit you. Adding in an aim routine before matches will help your shot as well, and I'll be adding in chapters throughout the video so you could go ahead and click back to sections when needed. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the guide because it did take a long time to make and hopefully you guys learned a lot from it. Please comment down below what helped you the most and if you like my share of content, remember to subscribe. Keep on the lookout for more content and hope to see you guys next time.